Hello, I'm Evan. And I'm Paul. And we're members of the Gulf Coast Spirit Society. Today we're going to be tasting Blackened. Blackened says here is a blend of straight whiskeys finished in black brandy casks remastered by Dave Pickerel. As I'm sure everyone's heard, uh, we lost Dave Pickerel just a couple of days ago. Um, and this is one of the last things that um, the whiskey legend put together before he passed. Uh, you know, it's his collaboration with Metallica. Uh, they wanted to put out a whiskey, so he helped craft something uh, for them. And it is, like you said, a blend of straight uh, whiskeys finished in black brandy casks. Uh, the name obviously comes from the uh, the song on the Injustice for All album. And then uh, they further integrate it with the music by saying that... Uh, they the barrels were aged while listening to Metallica music, uh, so you know they cranked it up in uh, in the rig houses for it to uh, the the vibrations to help uh, integrate it with the cast. Interesting. Um, I've seen that once before when I was in Kentucky over at Copper and Kings, mm -hmm. and they they kind of give us a demonstration. You could really you could feel those you know the vibrations yeah, in there yeah. so I mean, there must be something to it maybe maybe there maybe there is maybe there isn't so i'm i'm, I'm just kind of um intrigued by the blend of straight whiskeys because it doesn't say if it's straight bourbons or straight rice yeah um you know i've tasted this a few times i really can't pinpoint anything um but uh let's let's give it a try yeah and i mean saying i mean i i do like that it's straight whiskeys so that's nice so you you know you get you know, you have a little bit of an idea, but uh, the fact that it says whiskeys, I'm assuming it's a blend of bourbon and rye, would be my guess anyways. Which has been done before. I mean, you yeah. have Forgiven, um, I think High West does it, Boo Rye, right. uh, you know, and there's a few other ones out there. Smooth like Ambler, it. Contradiction. That's right. And I think I just saw somebody, some new, somebody else just did mm -hmm. it. So this ought to be interesting. I mean, Dave Pickerel was kind of a, in addition to being a master distiller, he was a master blender and a master promoter of products. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. He's uh, he was definitely a larger than life character who uh, who was very good at promoting their uh, the products that he that he helped create. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, let's, let's see what this is all about. Oh, it's, that's interesting. It's different. Yeah. 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 I don't know what I was expecting the first time that I knows this. And again, it's another shock getting back into it. But uh, um, uh, yeah, I don't know what I was expecting, but it, it definitely kind of uh, um, the nose was surprising. Yeah, I was kind of went into it expecting something very rye forward just because of Dave's experience oh, doing yeah. rye with yeah, Whistle that would Pig. Make sense, yeah. But um but man, right now when I nose it, I'm almost getting something a little savory. Like and then and then I start getting rye spice. Yeah, I get I get rye. I also get um I get a little bit of young corn a little. Um not man, I don't know. Uh Yeah, it's 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 different. There's yeah, I think a lot that going little, on. That's kind of savory thing that I'm, I was saying. I don't think it's really savory. I think now that I you know kind of reset my mind, I thought I was expecting maybe more of a Kentucky style rye, mm. you know, um, a low rye rye, and this oh, no. has a little kind of notes of Alberta, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, some of the uh, yeah the whistle pig. Yeah. 
it's smooth. I don't, let me see. What? Well, I mean, I get a little, like a little cinnamon, you know, a little baking spice. Obviously coming from the rye. The longer I nose it, actually, the more I like the nose. I actually wasn't the biggest fan of the nose, but now, yeah, the more I nose it, I, I kind of like that, actually. Yeah, and I mean, it's opened up a little. Um, you know, I've had this for, you know, a week or so and kind of tasted it on and off. But, I, you know, it's so, I guess, it well integrated that nothing really just sticks out. It's, yeah. it's, it's very balanced. I mean, yeah, it's I'm curious degrees. how long it was finished like together because I'm assuming they married the whiskeys together and then put them in the brandy cask. Um, yeah, interesting because I'm not getting any kind of fruity like a brandy type. Oh you know, no, yeah, notes in this. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean the color's nice, and uh, being that it's a blend of straight whiskeys, it can't be colored or anything. Yeah, correct. Huh? Well, Hmm. What do you think? I don't know. Again, it's 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 different. It kind of you know, like whenever you drink bourbon, even if it's like a different profile of other bourbons you've had, it's still like you relatively know what to expect. Yeah. And same thing with rye and everything. And this is. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting, but it's it's kind of taken a little bit to process. Well, I mean, I'll tell you this: I I I like it. You know, I I uh, I, I didn't know what to expect either. And you know, and as we were talking, that's you know, we went through like the forgiven and the boo rye and all those, and I, well, I thought, well, maybe it's going to be something like that, but it's not anything like that. No. So, yeah, okay, yeah, on the finish. I, I definitely get rye whiskey, mm -hmm. and it's something really high. It's either Canadian, like the hundred percent, or it's the uh, Indiana ninety five. How I would know, MGP, but it doesn't really. No, I think I no, MGP. I think I get that kind of that that same sweetness that I get from like the Canadian rye. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, which again, knowing him, it would make sense. But yeah, it's, it's that kind of that sweetness. But then I also, hold on. Man, I'm, it, this is really coming around to me. See, and I also get, mm, yeah, see, after the finish starts really going, I get this like, like sweet cornbread thing, mm -hmm. which I mean, any t yeah. See, I'm not That'll, picking up a whole lot of corn, but I do it's notice like a, that um, in the finish, the finish seems to. That's when I start getting the spice and a little bit of the a little heat, like a tiny bit of heat, and then I start getting a little bit of that Kentucky hug, mm -hmm. you know, and um, which normally when you taste something, you'll get the heat up front. And then it just kind of goes away. But this, I'm getting the, a little heat late. But it's it's a real nice, pleasing heat. It's not anything that makes you kind of jolt or anything like that. It's not hot by any means. Super easy to drink. Seeing on the entry, I get what I'm assuming is the black brandy. It's just kind of this, like, sweet, almost like a little bit of syrupy something going mm -hmm. on. Um... But yeah, the finish is all that rye, but then yeah, I still get that little bit of like sweet cornbread, like the mm -hmm. you know. And I'm not the biggest fan thing. of uh, of Whistle Pig. I mean, I really like some of their limiteds. I mean, they're yeah. they're pretty high, they're they're uh, expensive, and but I like them. I mean, I, I did like the the Spirit of Mob. I was a big fan of the Black Prince. Um, I haven't been the biggest fan of their ten year. Um, or the old world, or their farm stock, or anything like that. But this I like, man. And, and I, maybe it's just because of how unique it is. It's not like anything else I've had. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out yeah. what I think about it. I, it's not. 
I don't dislike it, and but it's not something that I'm like over the moon about. But I'm trying to place it on where mm-hmm. it, it's a. It's definitely different. It's a it's a unique whiskey. There's nothing else out on the whiskey market that tastes like this. Yeah. So there's nothing you can kind of say, well, this is kind of like X. No. No, it, there's, there's nothing like it. And you know, in the price point, I think it's somewhere around fifty bucks. So at first, right away, I was like. 50 bucks is a little steep, you know, for well, something that's kind of unknown. And especially because, I mean, with the the band tie-in, you know, sometimes you kind of expect a, you know, a gimmick. Yeah. And, um, but at the same time, I think if you were to strip away all of the, um, the tie-ins and everything and just pour this for somebody blind... I think this there's a lot of whiskey drinkers out there that I think would love this, mm-hmm. you know. And that's what I was what I was getting at is that yeah, strip away all the yeah. marketing and everything. I have had fifty dollar whiskeys that I don't like as much as this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously there are there are some that are just solid staples of the industry that are less than this, but they're not really unique. You know, you know what you're getting. Mm-hmm. Whereas this. I had no idea what to expect, and then even after I drank it, I was kind of like, I, I still don't know what this is, you know, but I do know that yeah. it's 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 interesting, man, and it's unique, and I, and I think there's a, I'm wondering how this would do in a cocktail. I really like that rice spice finish that you get. I mean, you get really? a little bit of the, like a tiny bit of licorice in the end, but it's so soft, because I'm not the biggest fan of black licorice, but I guess in moderation, it's okay. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know if mm. again I don't dislike it, but I don't know if this is something that I would go buy a bottle of. Yeah, it's just not, um, it's not something. It, it's definitely, definitely something worth trying. If this was, this is definitely one of those like bar pour experiment things. For you know, sure. the, the try it before you buy it Absolutely. things. Um. Uh, which I always do. Even man, even a lot of times whiskeys that I don't think I would like, I still my curiosity of wanting to try everything mm-hmm. uh, makes me want to uh, at least go get a bar pour. Now sometimes that uh, turns out very poorly. I could name a specific whiskey that did that, but. Sometimes it it's pleasantly surprising, and I I think this is one of those that is definitely, and it may even go fifty fifty. I think that some people really like this, and some people just it won't be their thing. I think Metallica fans are going to clean up on this, but but I don't think they're going to be disappointed with what no, they're getting. No, I yeah, man. If this is something that you want to throw in, yeah, I. I I'll put it like this, man. As as when when a lot of marketing is involved, I always go in with some skepticism. And this actually, if there was like an over and under, I would have picked the under, and this came in mm. over <laughs> from what I was expecting. So that being said, you know, I mean, it's I think it's a solid whiskey. It's you know um, interesting, absolutely unique. Yeah, I I can I I'll definitely agree with you on that that over under thing because any I'm so overly skeptical with anything that comes out in the market these days because they it, it's just there's a lot of times so much hype and and it, so a lot of times I I don't really uh, expect a lot like if they overhype something I mm-hmm. kind of like it, it but uh, yeah it's you know. I didn't hear a whole lot of hype about this. It kind of came out of nowhere for me. Well, it's more the marketing behind yeah. it, I would say. Yeah. And anytime something's tied to a celebrity. Well, yeah. yeah. It's like I recently saw like Stallone is coming out with, yeah. it, you know, and but and then Metallica, and I was like, I love Metallica, man. Yeah. What are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, they didn't just go off to some little offshoot upstart, man. They went to yeah, Dave Pickerel. Yeah, that's true. You yeah. Know, a yeah. guy that's known for creating magic with blends. Yeah. They very so, easily could have gone to Diageo or somebody yeah. and, you know, thrown something out. Yeah, slap the label on whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So So yeah, it's um it's it's different. I definitely think that 
it's worth a try because like I said, this is something that you either could love or just it could not be your thing. Yeah. All right, man. Well, Metallica's Blackened, that's really unique. Yes.